Hello everyone, this is Packrat Eastern215. I thought I'd try a video this time for the next installment of the Garmin G1000 tutorial series. Today we're going to talk about the lower part of the panel here on your primary flight display. First thing you notice is OAT, that's outside air temperature of 14 degrees Celsius. Uh, this will change depending on altitude and outside temperature, obviously. Second one is the inset key. This is a soft key which creates an inset window on your primary flight display. This shows you where you are in the world. If you notice it's set to track up, there's no way to change this in FSX that I'm aware of. However, on the actual Garmin system, you can change it to north up. Next is the range. Right now it's displaying 50 nautical miles. The range can be changed depending on the map zoom here. Using the range knob on plus you can increase it or decrease it. Down here is a declutter button. The declutter button adds and removes certain aspects. If it just states declutter then everything that is normally on the map is displayed including airspace, airports, navigational aids and such. If you hit the declutter button once it will remove the airspace. If you hit it a second time, it removes uh, radio navigation stations such as VLRs. It will also remove intersections. If you hit it a third time, it will remove the airports, leaving you with a clean map. And if you hit it again, it will cycle back to where everything is back on it. The next thing we see over here is an OBS button. As far as I know, the OBS button in FSX does absolutely nothing. All right. As we discussed in the radio section, the CDI button down here changes the course deviation indicator to track whichever navigational source you want to use. The magenta line is the GPS. Uh, the solid green line is NAV1. The double lined arrow is NAV2, but it will also display which navigational source you're using right here on the CDI. All right. The next button is for your transponder. If you notice your transponder right here is set to 1200 and it is on. If you hit the transponder soft key, you can change the code on the transponder. If you hit it again, it brings up a set of numbers. You just select the numbers that ATC uh, assigned to you, say 2200. So you'd hit 2, 2, 0, 0. And if you notice, your transponder code has changed to 2200. If you hit the back button, it'll take you back to the previous screen where you have VFR in the code. VFR automatically sets it to 1200, which is the VFR squawk code for North America. As you see, I pushed the VFR squawk code and it went to 1200. If you go hit the back button again, it'll take you to the original page. The timer reference key, as I stated earlier, allows you to change the reference speeds for the airspeed tape. However, like I said, I don't recommend that you change these. These are the default settings. It also allows you to start a timer if you are using a timed approach. If you, if you notice it says start in question mark, if you hit the enter key over here, it'll start the timer. And it's asking you if you want to stop, hit enter again, and it'll stop it, and then reset hit the timer reference key again to make the window disappear. The other key over here is the nearest key. What that'll do is it'll tell you what the nearest airports are to you. You can select these airports and scroll down the list by pushing right down here where it says cursor on off. If you push that and then use the plus and minus to scroll down the list. Say so I want to go to Whiskey 24. If I want to go to Whiskey 24, then I would hit the direct key and then enter twice. And that sets up my flight plan direct to Whiskey 24. 
If you look at the top of the screen, it'll tell you what the waypoint is you're flying to, the distance, desired track, and your current track. Since I'm not moving, my current track is not displayed correctly. And that pretty much covers that lower panel right there. More to come. Uh, if you hit the flight plan button again, it'll make this window disappear. Also, if you hit the clear button, it'll take it to the original page. Thank you, and come again.